going, we don't need roads. So it's so good to see you again. I genuinely, truly love this movie. So seriously, thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to jump to this. I feel like now that you have an understanding of what it means to be a filmmaker, you know what it takes to step behind the camera and craft a story. What is a scene or a moment from one of your past movies that you would have loved to have been behind the camera for? Not not to say that you would have done it better, but just to know what it would have felt like uh, as, as a director. Oh, God. I mean, I don't think I have an answer to that because my biggest fear is directing myself. <laughs> So I don't I think I would prefer to to not have to do that. So you decided pretty early in this process that you were not going to give yourself a, a role in the movie? Yeah, as soon as I decided to direct the film, I knew I did not want to be in it. I gotta say you're a great actor. Like I'm just and I but I, I do Thank totally you. I understand I understand where you're coming from. Um so much of this movie I feel like is about who we can trust uh and 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 what we're told versus what's actually going on. When you started out in this industry, I know you had people around you who who were able to protect you, but how much of that was a concern for you? When you would walk into those early rooms, how on guard did you feel the need to be just just for your own protection? Well, I think because I grew up in this industry with famous parents. You know, and I think there's something really special about being a child in that environment because you see things from a very pure point of view. And so I was always kind of like the fly on the wall that was witnessing, you know, the way people acted different around certain people or when they act different when they want something or whatever. So I do think a lot of this comes from, you know, that um, kind of pure observation that I, that I took in when I was a kid. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, I, I would imagine that uh, a huge factor uh, of directing is communication, being able to talk with your cast and crew uh, to convey what you want. Um, I, don't, I don't ask personal questions, but I would like to know just because of your personal relationship with Channing, is there a different way you communicate with him versus how you communicate with, with other people on set? Well, you know, the, the, the thing that I really learned is that every actor needs to be spoken to differently. You can't speak to them all the same. Everyone, it's like, it's like the way that we've kind of discovered that everyone has a different way of learning. Some people are visual, some people are audio, some people, um, you know, can't like need to be like spoken to, you know, there's so many different ways to, to learn. Um, and so I had a different way of directing all of my actors by the end. Um, it's kind of like learning how to speak their language and learning how you can support them best, you know? Fair enough. Well, talking about different actors, I'd like to know um, when it comes to different directors you've worked with, I'd imagine, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can tell, there's an air, literally an air show going on behind me in Chicago right now. So I don't know if you can hear the jets flying no, by. No, I was like, uh, that's, that's fake behind you, right? No, that's no, this is, this is my apartment. This is, this is Chicago. It literally looks like a fake backdrop. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, this is kind of Gotham, Gotham City in a way. The um, cloud looks fake. Oh no, it's 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 right, it's real. Um, I I obviously whenever I talk with with actors who who make that jump to directing, all of them have great stories about amazing things they've learned that they wanted to replicate from great directors. By no means would I ever want you to like say a name, but did have was there any lesson that you learned from a director experience where you go, yeah, I'm not gonna do that because that person did that thing, and I want to make sure I don't replicate that on my set. No, I don't think so. I think um. No, I don't think so. I actually think, because when, especially when you're an actor and you're on a set, you're so focused on wanting to do a good job that you're kind of not, if something's not going right, as I'm usually blaming myself. I'm usually thinking like as an actor, like I'm not able to get there. Um, and so I was never like, it's your fault. This isn't going the way I want it to go. You know, I think it's, um, y you know, you're there to, to serve their vision. Um, mm -hmm. and even if someone's kind of maybe explaining something to you in a way that you don't understand. Um, in my mind, I think I would always make it about, well, I'm not understanding them, not they're not communicating to me the way they should be. So, um, no, I think there's been sets that I've enjoyed more than others. And so, you know, I, I definitely tried to create an environment um, that I would want to be on as an actor or a crew member. Fair enough. Um, I just want to end by saying that I thought two things whenever this movie was over. One, I really want to see it again because I feel like you kind of had to make two movies at one uh -huh. time. Um, and the first is that I, I cannot wait to see the next movie you directed because I, I seriously, I love this and I think you're incredible talent behind the camera and uh, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank I you so you. much. That means a lot. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need roads.